and hear from a young woman who is doing both of those things. And in that work, she is already cre she's already created a nonprofit. She's recently awarded the YMCA Peace Medal. She's one of the youngest recipients ever to receive that award. Um, she's been recognized as one of Canada's top, uh, top immigrant service uh, award recipients. And she's here to talk about her own journey launching a uh, mental health nonprofit and creating a world where there are support systems for everyone. Please welcome Loisa. Thanks. Good morning, everyone, or I think afternoon. Good afternoon. First off, I want to start off by saying happy birthday to YMCA and congratulations for 175 years and thank you for all the work you have done for all the young people across the world. My name is Luisa Aquino. I'm 19 years old. I was born in Manila. I moved to a small city in Canada named Winnipeg and I currently live in Toronto. I currently attend the University of Toronto and I'm pursuing an honors bachelor of psychology and health sciences and I'm doing a major in mental health studies, a major in international development studies, and a minor in media studies. I'm the founder of Peace of Mind Canada, a youth mental health nonprofit, as well as Leaders of Today Canada, a youth empowerment nonprofit. Today, I want to talk about mental health, but first, I need a quick visual, and I need all of your help. If you're comfortable and able, I need you to please stand up if you know somebody who has died by suicide. If you are comfortable and able, I need you to please stand up or remain standing if you know somebody who is diagnosed with a mental illness. And if you are comfortable and if you are able, I need you to please stand up or remain standing if you have ever struggled with your mental health before, whether it be being overwhelmed with stress or forgetting to take care of yourself. I want you all to take a moment to look around the room and understand what I see as well. Thank you, please have a seat. Did you know every 40 seconds, someone in the world dies by suicide according to the World Health Organization? In front of me are thousands of beautiful people gathered together from across the world, all coming from different walks of life and sharing unique perspectives and narratives. As a young person, as an immigrant, as a person of color, and as a woman, underestimation and being overlooked and not being taken seriously is no foreign concept to me. There have been many challenges and many moments in my social activism career that have been filled with self-doubt, negativity, and discouragement. But I'm reminded every single time that I must use my minorities to push me to be more and to do more because I represent more than just myself. So it is my honor to be up here today to share my story as I get to represent all the minorities that make up who I am. I thought long and hard about a common message that would be relevant and applicable to everyone in the audience, regardless of what you're passionate about. And I came down to one word, and that was conversation. Mental health was not always the focal point of my activism. A bit about my background is that I actually started my first fundraiser when I was nine years old for victims of Typhoon and Doi, and that was in 2009. So all the way from when I was nine years old to 15 years old, I was always an advocate for child rights and human rights and youth empowerment. Up until I was 15 years old on June 17, 2015, the day I lost one of my best friends to suicide. His suicide was one of four high school student suicides that occurred in Winnipeg within the time span of one month. And in a city as small as Winnipeg, you can kind of understand how hard it hit the community. You can try to imagine the frustration and confusion and the sadness that flooded the city, as well as onto social media through hashtags and pictures and old stories. And I remember exactly where I was when I found out. I was sitting on my basement couch on my phone and I got a text from my old teacher from middle school. And 
I thought there was no way that it was true. I had just seen him the next day. So I messaged him, I called Miguel, I messaged him on Facebook, I texted him, everything. And I didn't stop. I called some of our friends to see if anyone had heard from him. And I never stopped until his mother texted me saying, yes, it was true. He really was gone. And I'm not going to lie and say that I dealt with it in the best way possible. I sat on the couch for a long time. Needless to say, my life has not been the same since then. A week passes by and I was asked to do the eulogy at his funeral. So on June 24th, I spoke in front of an overpacked funeral home with over hundreds of people and I shared the stories and words he will forever be remembered by next to his open casket. I remember the day after he passed away, I didn't tell my family, I fell asleep right on that couch and I was dreading getting up the next morning because I also had an exam. And it was the first day of exam season. And I hadn't told anyone in my family and I went upstairs and the first thing I had was my mom asking me if I was okay. And it turns out the principal had called my, my house phone and told us that if I needed help, there were resources available at school. But if I'm being honest, I didn't want to talk. I just wanted to know why. And I remember coming home from the funeral and thinking, there's no way that this is the end. There's absolutely no way that a life this beautiful and a friendship this amazing, that this was the ending. And I made a promise to myself on that day and to Miguel that I would do everything and anything in my power to make sure that no one had felt the way that Miguel had felt and also the way the community was feeling. So I started off with a single tweet. I said, does anybody want to help me create a mental health group? It narrowed down to about 10 people and we called ourselves Peace of Mind 204. And 204 is the area code for the province that I'm from. And so we decided to have events called YAMIS, Youth Against Mental Health and Illness Stigma. And at these events, we have young people come together and they share their stories and experiences surrounding mental health, whether it be in the education system, within their families or the friend groups or the healthcare system. And we all just came together to have simple conversation. So at the first YAMIS, we had 100 people come together. On the second one, we had 200. On the third one, we had 250. And on the fourth one, we had 700 young people come together from across Manitoba, and it was funded by an $11,000 grant by the government of Manitoba. And I remember this one girl that I met, and she came up to me, and she was a refugee from Syria, and she said, Louisa, you know, I've never heard the words mental health together side by side in a sentence. And I realized that that was the one time and the first time that I found out that there was so much power behind conversation. So in 2017, Peace of Mind became an incorporated nonprofit in Manitoba and we expanded to Toronto. In 2018, we expanded to Ottawa through smaller skilled events. And in 2019, we became a federally incorporated nonprofit organization, officially being registered as Peace of Mind Canada. And we're beginning to grow our expansions in Ottawa and Toronto, while also expanding to British Columbia and planning for our first Peace of Mind event in the United States. Thank you. So these events taught me two things. One, young people want to talk about mental health, but it can be difficult without the safe space and the platform to do so. Two, there is power in simple conversation. That brings me back to the stigma surrounding mental health. There's a stigma surrounding mental health and the silence it entails may be loud, but together our voices are much louder and much more powerful. I'm a large believer in the fact that you don't have to change the whole world to create a change, but you can change one person's world and make all the difference. And even though mental health is a touchy subject, it doesn't mean that it should not be touched because conversation leads to awareness and awareness leads to education and education leads to a more empathetic approach to mental health and just about anything else that you could be passionate about. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I promise you, you won't regret having these conversations because I know what it's like to not have had it and not take it seriously. I need you to look around the room again and look at the thousands of stories and faces in front of you 
and I want to encourage you to talk to at least five more new people before YMCA 175 is over. It doesn't have to be to talk about mental health, but I believe you all have something to offer, and I believe that we all have stories worth listening to and lives worth living. Our walks of lives may be completely different, but they all have value and they all have worth. I've told my story over a hundred times. I'm not gonna lie and say that it's gotten to be completely easy. But I realize that the challenges that I have when sharing the story, it gets overpowered and trumped over by the amount of change it can create in this world. So also, please feel free to find me at any point in time throughout the rest of these next few days. Message me on Twitter, or Instagram. I do wanna talk about mental health with everyone here, if I could, um, and also talk about ways that we could bring mental health to your YMCA. And I may be the one up here sharing my story, but I'm exactly like all of you, a single young person wanting to create change with a common goal of doing good. I'm available here to bounce off ideas and hear your stories. Changing the world and eradicating the stigma surrounding mental health is not exclusive to the world and I. So let's have these conversations. You never know who you're saving when you share your story and open up an opportunity for dialogue. It might seem like a small action and a small change by sharing your story and speaking up, but there's no such thing as a change too small. Important conversations surrounding environments, civic engagement, health and well-being, or economic empowerment and employment, they all need to happen and they're all equally as important. Let me be living, breathing proof that you're never too young to create a change. Because when you're faced with adversity, you have the choice to practice resiliency. My journey was not short of challenges, as the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my entire life is crawl out of this hole that I was in. Decide to strip the pain from the power, just tried to strip the power from the pain that was holding me down and turn it into something that I could create proactive resolutions for people like Miguel. So, for a long time, I did not want to talk. The warmth Miguel had made me feel was gone, and there was emptiness in places that should not have been that cold. Eventually, I learned that these conversations surrounding mental health needed to be had, because you cannot solve an issue without talking about it. We cannot eradicate the stigma surrounding mental health without saying the word self-harm. We cannot eradicate the stigma surrounding mental health without saying the word depression. We cannot eradicate the stigma surrounding mental health without saying the word anxiety. And we cannot eradicate the stigma surrounding mental health without saying the word suicide. We must learn to utilize the most powerful resource that we all have access to, our voices. We must learn to come together to inspire and encourage resiliency. So now I need help from you all one last time by sharing with me, with everyone else in the room, and with everyone on the, around the world on the live stream, your voice. All I need is one big I promise with everything you have in your heart after these statements so we can all be witnesses to the power of conversation and show others that they are not alone and we are all in this together. So, if you have not been practicing self-care, do you promise to make today day one of caring for your mental health? Do you promise to be kind and smile at strangers for we truly never know the battles someone may be facing? Do you, do, do you promise to do your best to be a voice for the 19 people that have lost their lives to suicide around the world since I stepped foot on this stage? And last, do you promise to do your part in eradicating the stigma surrounding mental health by having conversation and being a voice for those we have lost and those still struggling in silence? My acknowledgement for the power of conversation came to me when I realized that slowly but surely, with one voice at a time, one story at a time, and one voice at a time, I could show others that they are not alone and that the warmth that Miguel made me feel could be rekindled by conversation and by creating for others some peace of mind. My name is Luisa Aquino, I'm 19 years old, and as a young person, I know it can be scary to spark conversation surrounding mental health and anything else you may be passionate about. But I promise you that your voice possesses the power to create social change around the world. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you.